So 4.6 gives us something that we haven't seen yet. In everything so far, we've been um, factoring expressions. In 4.6, we're going to solve problems. And anytime you wanted to solve something, not just simplify it or factor it, we had to have an equation. And so really what we're going to do in this 4.6 is make a subtle shift from expression to equation. And we're going to look at um, polynomials that are set equal to zero. And so this equal to zero bit is really important as we go about solving these. And so this is a standard form, fancy words. This is the standard form for a quadratic equation. And you'll do more on a quad quadratic equations in the next level of math. But we're going to start um, with quadratic equations in solving them with a with a strategy of factoring and the zero principle. And so there are really in solving quadratic equations, so anything that has that squared term here, um, and that's why it says that a can equal zero because we want the squared term in this, there are two things to do, two steps. Factor it and then use the zero product principle. And so two steps doesn't seem like a whole lot, aside from the fact that factoring has everything that we have learned so far in this chapter in one little word in the, in the um, instructions there. So let's take a little more time at what the zero product principle is talking about. So in these ones, so this is my example. So this would be um, a polynomial set equal to zero, fancy words, this is a quadratic equation, and if it's an equation, we can solve it. We can do more than just simplify. We can actually tell you what x equals. And so the, the process that we're going to do is factor it. And in this one, it was the AC test. The shortcut has been done in that factoring. And then this is the zero product principle. And what the zero product principle says is that if we take a look at this factored form of the equation, there are two ways that it could be true. Either this bracket, could equal zero, which is what's written down here, or this bracket could equal zero. Because if one of them equaled zero, then the whole equation would equal zero. And so we take two little tiny equations, those either or, and we get two answers for x. And so this is, you know, <laughs> not just a choose your own adventure, but this one you've got two different options that would make the equation true. And so it's it's simple um, equation solving going from here to here, but it is worth, I think, writing out the steps. Now, this is something that's not in your book. The reason that you have two of these is that if we were to graph this, and you are not graphing this um, in this course, the, the picture of this equation would look something like that. And so it touches the, the this part twice. If, if you, we are going to do more graphing, um, but I always talk more about that in class. If you're just watching the videos, that's why it actually touches this um, x-axis twice, um, and that's the shape of it. You don't need to worry anything about that right now, but that's why there are two options for the solution for x. Let's take a little bit more time as we go through a few examples of these. In these ones, I'm going to do the shortcut if at all possible. Um, so if you're not comfortable with that, you might need a, a little more space on your page. So with A, I start out, I'm going to factor this equation. Remember, it's equal to zero. And so my first um, step in solving this is to factor it. I've got no greatest common factor. I have three terms, so that pushes me into the AC test. This is a simple trinomial where one is that a value, so that's when I could use the shortcut. I factor 20 in as many ways possible, and I have either all my factors being positive or all of them being negative to give me a positive 20. When I look at my b term, I have a negative 9, so that means that everything's going to be negative. And that allows me to choose these as the two numbers that either, long cut, decompose your middle term, or shortcut, are the numbers in the brackets. So shortcut shown, if you're doing the long cut, 
um, you'll need to pause the video or maybe take some more space. Once I have it factored, because that's the first step, now we have to do the zero product principle. And so that means that either this x minus 4 equals 0 or the other bracket could equal 0 because those would be two ways that would make this equation true. And so I just solve these simple little things. I'm going to add 4 to both sides of this one and get my one option that x equals 4. Or remember there's options here. This one I would add 5 to both sides and I get my second option that x equals 5. So my solution to this are two numbers, either x equals 4 or x equals 5, to make this true. All right, moving across the page here from, to C and C. I don't know why there's two C's here. Um, name of the game, factor, and then zero product principle. So with C, I could take a look at this one. I'm going to look for greatest common factor first, and I could see that I have an x common to both of those, so I could factor the x out. And I now have it fully factored. In this case, I still have two things that could be zero. Either x could equal zero or this could equal zero. And so either x equals zero or x minus five equals zero. Either one or the other, if it's zero, it will amount this whole equation to zero. And so x equaling zero or with this one, I have to add five to both sides and I get that x could equal five. So these are my answers, either x equals zero or x equals five. All of these, name of the game, factor, zero product principle, two steps. So for C, I don't have a greatest common factor. I have two terms and that fits the difference of squares pattern. So I can throw down my two brackets, positive, negative. Remember, it's still an equation. So put that zero on the end square root the first term, square root the second term. And now that I have it fully factored, now it's the zero product principle. So either this equals zero or this equals zero. And I like writing that down. So either x plus three equals zero or x minus three equals zero. And so taking the time to solve each of these two little equations, I get that x could equal negative three or x could equal a positive 3. And that's where I get my two answers for these. I'm going to scroll. There's only three more to do here with these. Um, again, just, you know, it really is about factoring. Um, taking a look at these ones, always check for greatest common factor first. There's nothing in this one. There are three terms, so that pushes me into the AC test. It's a simple trinomial, so I can use the shortcut. I'd have plus nine at the top of my number puzzle. I'd have one and nine and three and three. They're all going to be positive. And checking my middle term, those are the two that would satisfy my number puzzle. Using the shortcut, And this one gives me that strange case. So it's either x plus 3 equals 0 or, same thing again, x plus 3 equals 0. You don't have to do this second one because it's redundant. It's the same thing. So my solution is, whoops, sorry, x equals a minus 3. And that one only has one option. Okay, so E, taking a look at this one. I could have a massive number at the top of my number puzzle, but I could also remember to common factor this one first. So the greatest common factor here is a two, and I want that part of my answer at the bottom. When I factor that out, I'd be left with an x squared, a minus five x, and a negative 24 equaling zero. That knocks it way down. So now I have negative 24 at the top of my number puzzle. I'll just do it down here. I think I'll have room. Negative 24. So I'd have 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, or 4 and 6. I have negative 24, so I have this imbalance where 1 is positive, 1 is negative. My B term is a negative 5, so that means my larger factors are going to be negative and my smaller factors are going to be positive. That would help me zone in 
on the factors that satisfy my, my number puzzle, positive 3 and negative 8 add to give me a negative 5. So those ones with the shortcut are the numbers that go in my factored form of my equation. And I'd write the 2 as part of it. So in this one, when I take a look at it, I have two options that could amount to zero. There's no x part of my two. So as much as it's still part of my equation, it's not going to uh, figure into my solution here. So my zero product principle would look like this, either x plus three equals zero or x minus eight equals zero. So solve those two little equations that I get that either x equals negative three or x equals a positive eight. Okay, last one on the page. So we've had this one that was a perfect square where I had one option. I had this one where I common factored first, but it didn't have an X and I kind of ignored it. The last one here, I'm going to take a look at and I could see that I have a greatest common factor for this one. I could pull a 3X out of everything. And when I did so, I would be left with an X squared, a plus 7X and a plus 6. I want my 3x to be part of my answer, but I'm going to turn my attention to this trinomial. It is a simple trinomial, and so at the top of my number puzzle, I'd have a plus 6. 1, 6, 2, and 3 would be all the factors of 6. It's all positive, so that makes things easier. And 1 and 6 would actually add together to give me my b term, which is a plus 7. So, shortcutting this one. Hopefully that's not too uncomfortable for you. I'd get x plus 1 and x plus 6. And I'd have the 3x out at the front. Now when I do my zero principle here, I'm going to have three different options. So either 3x could equal 0, or I'm running out of space, x plus 1 could equal 0, or one more, x plus 6 could equal 0. That's going to give me three different options here. If I solve for x here, I'd get that x equals 0 or x equals a negative 1 or this last one, x could equal a negative 6. So just to recap here, x could equal 0, x could equal a negative 1, or x could equal a negative 6. We actually have three options on that one. And the reason why is the shape of that, it would touch the x-axis three times. But again, that's way ahead. Sometimes people like context for these. And if you're just focusing on the mechanics, then these are the three oddballs. The ones at the top are pretty standard, um, where you you, you have like the two options because that's really classic. The, the bottom three are in here because they're the oddballs. So let's take a look at the top of the second page um, of notes in this one, and then I'm going to um, cut the video and we'll do the word problems as a separate, um, separate, separate um, video. Okay, so the ones here are quadratic equations, but they're not in that standard form. The problem with them is that they are not set equal to zero. And so in these, we need to make them set equal to zero. That's what set equal to zero. That's why it says they have to be rearranged before you solve. You have to set them equal to zero. It's not the three product principle. It's the zero product principle. And so setting them equal to zero is really important. If I wanted everything on one side here, I could get everything on one side by subtracting three from both sides. So that would give me a 2x squared minus x minus three equaling zero. The other thing with these, if you want to factor them and see them um, as their AC test uh, things, they need to be in descending order. So with this one, I've got three terms and I can't do my shortcut because I have a two out the front. So that would have me put a negative six at the top of my number puzzle because now I've got it in standard quadratic form. I'm going to factor it. So one and six and two and three. I know I have this imbalance and I have a negative B term, so that puts the larger factors as negative, the smaller is positive, and those would be the two. Not that are the answers in my brackets, but that would decompose that middle term. 
because I have that 2x sitting out the front, no shortcut. So I've decomposed my middle term. I'm going to do the factoring by grouping. I'm going to pull out the common factors of just two terms at a time. And I have it down to that common binomial factor, so hopefully this isn't going too fast. So now I have it fully factored. Now that I have it factored, I can do the zero product principle because either x plus 1 is going to equal 0 or 2x minus 3 is going to equal 0. So these ones, I'd have x equaling negative 1 or adding 3, you're going to get a fractional answer. We get 2x equaling 3, and then keep solving for x, I get that x equals 3 halves. So these are my two answers. Either x equals negative 1 or x equals a 2 thirds. So you can get fractional answers for these ones. Okay, last one here. Again, it needs to be rearranged in order to solve. I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So I get a, an, an equation to work on of x squared minus 6x plus 9 equaling 0. And again, it's the zero product principle. I'm just actually going to rewrite that at the top of the page here because I'm really out of room. And then I would have to factor this. So I'd have plus 9 at the top of my number puzzle. I'd factor it in as many ways as I can. I've got a positive 9, but I've got a negative B term. So that means that all my factors are going to be negative. Those two would add together to give me my negative 6. So this one being a simple trinomial, because it has no coefficient other than 1 on the x squared terms, I can use the shortcut. So x minus 3 and x minus 3 could equal 0. And you might recognize this. We only have one option in this one because those two brackets are the same, because it's either x minus 3 equals 0 or same thing. And so it's redundant to do it again. And so we would just solve for my x here. And I'd get that x equals 3 as a solution to that one. So because we can solve these ones, we're going to move into word problems with them. So being solid in the mechanics of this chapter, same as we did in chapter two, when you were good at solving these things, when it was just numbers, then you could start applying what, we've, what we did with the word problems. And so I'd encourage you to, um, yeah, develop some, some confidence in your factoring and applying this zero product principle because those are the key things in understanding the word problems that are part of this chapter.